Hey there, CPO here, and the next thing I want to work on is getting my booms uh, cut to length and then also the holes drilled for each of the booms. Just like the body template, this printout is to scale. I've carefully calculated the design lengths for each of the booms, so as you can see, both the front and the rear have a overall length designator. For overall length, I'm basically referring to the length from the very edge of the motor mount all the way to the uh, other side of the boom. So that's how I'm measuring that. Now the rear boom uses the same measurement from the edge of the motor mount to the front. So it looks like we need to add a little bit of length here onto our cut boom to account for the rotating yaw assembly. So I measured the extra length of the assembly and it's about four millimeters. So my overall length I'm gonna to cut to is 437 millimeters as opposed to the 433 on the plans. The plans didn't account for the extra length of the yaw mechanism. I decided to use a coping saw to uh, cut the booms. Although I'm not really good with these things either. So uh, use whatever works for you, but these are pretty easy to cut. A quick rub down with the sandpaper will smooth off any rough edges. After measuring out the 10 millimeter hole position, I used my center punch to make a nice hole for drilling. And of course this little Dremel workstation makes quick work of the task. Next I start working on the two front booms. These are 420 millimeter overall length and because I don't have the yaw mechanism to deal with, I can just cut a straight 420 millimeter boom. Here's a peek at my gargantuan caliper that I use for measuring these booms. Set it for 420 millimeters and then mark my cut line. A little sawing action to get these the length. And remember, I'm doing two of these this time. I just used the one I just cut to use as a reference for the cut on the second one. Now that little extra piece that I just cut off actually can be used for the front spacer which is 40 millimeters in length. So I quickly measure it out and then cut that to size. Now I need to drill the holes on the front booms and I do it the same way I did the rear booms which is measure the nominal width of the booms which is somewhere between 12.8 and 13 millimeters and then basically uh, set the caliper to half of that distance. In this case I'm going to go with 6.5 millimeters to my center point and, uh, and then just scratch a line along the length of the boom uh, in a location obviously that is about 30 millimeters. Then I set the caliper to 30 millimeters and then scratch a mark the opposite direction which gives me that little X where I'm going to drill my hole. I claim no credit for this method. I watched David do it and it made perfect sense. Then I take my trusty center punch and mark my holes for drilling. Back to the Dremel to cut some holes. So here's a look at the three booms, uh, the two fronts and then the one rear, and also my little 40 millimeter front spacer. You can just about exactly get all of this from one 36 inch dowel. So now we need to do some finishing work on the motors by cutting the shafts to length. And to do that, I want to pull out the props that I'm going to use for this build. So while we're at it, we'll talk quickly about the props. These are 10 by 4.5 slow fly props from Hobby King. I got uh, two packs. One pack is black and then the other pack is orange. Each package contains two uh, standard rotation and then reverse rotation props. And uh, we'll be using uh, some of each of those for this build. So when you mount the prop on the motor with the numbers facing up, the swoop at the end will kind of give you an indication of which direction it's designed to turn. And this one would turn clockwise as seen from the top. I did an entire video on prop direction, so I'm not going to cover it all here. Uh, but hopefully if you're not familiar with that, you can uh, look at another video on how to tell. This one's got the swoop facing the opposite direction, which is going to mean it's designed to rotate counterclockwise. 
it should make sense if you look at it. And basically what I want is the two front props to counter rotate, just like I'm showing there. So those are the two props I'm going to use. Each prop comes with a set of prop adapters that are designed to fit exactly around the motor shaft that you're working with. So just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, one will be too small, one will be too large, and then one of them will be just right. That's the one you want to use. So I'm going with orange for my rear prop, which is pretty much in line with how I do uh, plane builds and helicopters, is uh, the accent color on the tail. So I want it to spin the same direction as the right front prop. So that'll be counterclockwise, uh, and so I'm going to pick the prop that best matches that. So here you see uh, my three props, two counterclockwise and one clockwise rotating prop. Once you figure out which prop adapter you should be using, it's best to cut them out with a razor. Because if you don't, you'll end up with these little extra pieces of plastic from twisting them off. So you'll have to cut them off anyway uh, to make everything fit cleanly. It's easier just to cut them off from the start. In addition to the prop adapters, I'm also going to use a washer that uh, fits below the prop and then another washer that fits above the prop. These washers are about 11 64ths of an inch or right around 4.3 millimeters inner diameter. I'm also using a nut. This is just a 4 millimeter metric standard nut that's going to go at the base of the shaft right above the bell housing. This will prevent putting too much pressure on the bell housing when you tighten the entire assembly down. After this nut, next will go on the washer and then the prop with prop adapter. Next goes on the other washer, and then last I'll use a nylon lock nut to finish the assembly. So for now I'm just doing a test assembly to see how long the shaft needs to be when I cut it off. I didn't actually screw down the lock nut just yet because I don't want to use it unnecessarily, so I'm using a standard nut on top and approximating how much I need to cut. I decided to cut the shaft at 21 millimeters from the point where the threads start. I'm resting the caliper on a small block of wood just to make it easier to line things up. And then I'm just going to use a black sharpie to make my reference mark. Once all my shafts are marked, I decided to cut them by placing them inside of a Ziploc freezer bag to protect the motor magnets from getting all of the metal shavings. So I just poke a hole through the bag and uh, then I can cut it and the motor will be protected. Safety glasses go on and then we get to cutting. I'm just using a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and then of course uh, rounding off the top edge there just to keep it from being sharp. Nah, not too shabby. I finish the cutting on the other motors and then test fit one of the props on the rear motor since this is the orange prop and I think everything looks nice. I will be using thread lock on that bottom nut once I do the final assembly. Next I mounted the motor mounts to the booms. I start with the tail first since it's probably the more complicated with that yaw assembly. But basically I'm just uh, fastening the zip ties around making sure that uh, I'm getting them good and snug and I ended up having to use four zip ties total uh, to lock it in just because of the uh, the length of my zip ties. These are four inch zip ties. I then used a total of six zip ties on the servo, uh, basically three sets of two. And make sure you alternate the direction of the zip ties so that all of the force is distributed evenly across the servo and the boom. Here's what the final assembly looks like. Everything should be nice and snug. If you have any movement you'll have to readjust. Also it's important to double check that you put the motor on the right side of the shaft. The hole facing up and the motor should be on the same side. Now we'll move to the front two booms which are a lot easier actually. For this, I'm just going to use the zip ties, uh, two each, to mount the motor mount to the boom. And I'm just going to use the holes that are there in the motor mount. Here's the holes that I'm using for the zip ties. 
two big ones next to one another and then a big one with a small one between another big one and then just wrap them around and again the motor mount should go all the way to the edge of the boom here's what it looks like when it's all done and it should be good and tight you shouldn't have any movement at all if you do just make sure you cinch down those zip ties really well grabbing with a pair of pliers and kind of pulling at maybe a 45 degree angle really helps Let's snip the ends and you're good to go one down one more to go and here's what we have now all three motor mounts are mounted uh, to their appropriate booms next what we'll do is mount the motors to the motor mount so for the front two booms I want the wires directly on top of the boom so when I mount the motor I'll make sure they're pointed in the right direction don't forget to apply thread lock to the grub screws uh, what I like to do is take a piece of tape like packing tape in this case and lay it down on the work table and then put a dab of thread lock onto the tape and then just work off of that go ahead and uh, get a little thread lock onto your grub screw screw it in to get it started uh, on both sides and then you can pop your motor in and tighten it down and just like I mentioned before in a previous video make sure that the bottom of the shaft isn't touching the wood by pulling up a little bit as you tighten it down so for the tail motor I actually want the wires pointed about 45 degrees uh, offset from the center of the boom line to clear the servo well I did learn a lesson here depending on how you attach your motor mount to your yaw mechanism you can actually end up with some problems where that grub screw is pointed directly at the servo which is going to make it really tough to get your hex driver in I was able to get it done but next time I do this I'm gonna make sure that the grub screws are pointed out to the sides not back towards the servo so while I still have that thread lock out I'm gonna grab a toothpick and just uh, apply a little bit of thread lock to the threads on the bottom of the shaft so that whenever I tighten down that bottom nut it'll get locked into place so I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all three motors just because I've got the thread lock out and it's gonna to go to waste if I don't use it so there we go three motors mounted on three booms things are moving right along so as always I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you on the next one